Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be talking about printing with the ANET ET4 printer. I've been using it for a few days now and as you can see I've done a few little prints and I've got it to a stage now where it's printing very nicely. It wasn't printing all that well to start off with, mostly due to the Cura profile, not the printer itself, as is always the case I'm, I'm sure. But first of all we'll go through how to initiate prints, how to load the filament and those sorts of technical things. Then we'll come back and have a closer look at the quality of the prints that I'm producing. And I'll talk about what changes we needed to make to the Cure Profile to get rid of a few little problems. Okay, we'll turn it on. First screen when we turn it on is the ANET splash screen. Then we get print, prepare and setting. You can change the language as well. Setting, we can move manually move all the axes around, the X, Y, Z and extruder. You can home the printer by pushing the home button. You can change the amount you move by 0.1, 1 and 10 millimeters. And if you put the, push the M button, you disable the stepper motors. So now we go to prepare. Uh, here we can set the nozzle temperature. We can start preheating, uh, change filament and level the bed and you can make the changes by 1, 5 or 10 degrees. That's the bed, that's the, uh, the nozzle. Change filament, we can unload and load and this is the amount that it unloads and loads, so that's 1 centimeter, 30 centimeters or 50 centimeters. Default is 30, that sort of fully unloads the filament. This shows the current nozzle temperature, uh, it won't load or unload until that reaches the standby temperature. This is the speed of unloading here. Leveling the bed, manually level the bed. These make the printhead move to the four different corners. And the auto leveling. We're just finishing up a print here of a, an M16 bolt. I've printed the nut and I'm just doing this to see how they're going to fit together to sort of check tolerances. But we'll see what happens at the end of the print. So what's happening is the filament is unloading by about 10 centimetres. The print bed moves back and the print head moves up. And then we are finished. You have to make sure that you've primed the filament all the way through to the nozzle there because it doesn't do it itself unless you totally unload. Let's do that. Unload. Now to unload you get a choice of one centimeter, 30 centimeters or 50 centimeters. Waits till it heats up and then it'll unload the filament and then you can reload the filament but again it only gives you the choice of 1 centimetre, 30 centimetre and 50 centimetres. So that 10 centimetres that is withdrawn uh, never gets sort of reloaded. So you either have to totally unload then totally reload automatically or you can load in 1 centimetre. So that's totally unloading now. That'll go out 30 centimetres. See the filament there. Or you can just manually load and unload, which is uh, the quickest and easiest way to do it, I find. So that's unloaded now. The filament is right out to the drive there. So let's load it again. And that will load back in 30 centimetres and get it right to the uh, nozzle. And if you don't do it this way, or you don't manually uh, make sure the nozzle is primed, it'll start printing without any filament uh, coming out the extrude or extruding out of the nozzle. I'm getting ready to start another print, so I'm putting the SD card in the slot there. Wait till the extruder has done its work. This is why I like doing it manually, because it's way quicker than this, and you know that the filament is uh, all the way through to the nozzle. Better get rid of the other print there. And I've just noticed with my print, it's very, very tight, actually needs more tolerance. And that film wasn't actually, there we go, now we're extruding because I've pushed it through, so that's better. I'll have to restart it to read the uh, SD card. 
vase. Okay, now that'll heat up. Heats up the bed first to 60C. Now it's heating up the nozzle to 200C. First thing it does is home to the top. Because the end detection switch is on the top here, it has to hit something at the top rather than down the bottom like all the other similar styles of printers. Now keep, a, keep an eye on the filament here. If you're not careful, it can fall off the spool like that. So that's something you have to watch with that sort of movement up to the top that the uh, filament doesn't fall off the spool like that. And then we start printing. So I have it laying down a skirt first. Now it uh, sort of helps to prime the nozzle as well. Now I'm printing a little section of a vase that I designed, which we'll have a look at in a little while. Uh, I've made some changes to the Cura setup to see if it can uh, smooth out the print. Okay, so let's get down to some printing. One of the first prints I decided to do was from the SD card supplied, and it's a little fan shroud uh, designed for ET4 printer. And that printed beautifully. Uh, really nice smooth print, good accuracy. Uh, so that was very encouraging. And I also printed a little calibration cube sent to me by, or calibration square sent to me by ANET, uh, which was pretty close. Uh, a bit short on that dimension there, quite a lot short actually, so probably need to do some uh, calibration to get it right. This is a uh, wing fence for my uh, Mackie jet, sort of goes on the wing to control the airflow. This is using the filament, the little bit of filament that came with the machine, which is pretty low quality, but that was a decent print. That's a totally usable object, that one. The next up, I printed another calibration cube uh, using the ET4 profile provided in Cura. And uh, it was a bit disappointing. I got these sort of diagonal lines coming across here. I wonder if you can see them in the light. So that needed a bit of investigation. I also uh, wanted to print a little pilot head there's the real thing there uh, for a Mackie jet and you wouldn't be very happy with that. So they are actually infill lines extending through to the outside. They're the uh, sort of the infill lines to fill up the internal space for strength and they were sort of extending through to the outside. Did a bit of research and I found a video that said uh, if you change the setting in Cura to print the wall before the infill lines, it can reduce that. And so I tried that, printed a benchy, and it did reduce it a little bit, but it's still there. Otherwise the benchy, a fair bit of stringing, uh, they can be just wiped off and uh, uh, reduced with a few tweaks in, in Cura. I'm not too concerned about stringing at this stage. We've got to get rid of those external lines. I also have a little uh, cylinder that I print for myself. It's a nice quick print, only takes about 20 minutes, and uh, there are the infill lines showing up on that as well. So I also saw uh, a video by Dr. Vax. does good reviews, so go and check out Dr. Vax. That's D-R-V-A-X. And he mentioned that uh, he didn't like the ET4 profile in Cura either. So he tried the Ender 3 profile, and that actually worked a lot better. There's a print of the cylinder using the end of three profile and you can see that is much smoother. It doesn't have the infill lines coming through. And I compared the end of three and the ET4 profiles in Cura and found that the infill wipe distance was radically different between the ET4 and the end of three. The end of three was zero and the ET4 was 1.2, I think. So I changed the ET4 to the same as the end of three and lo and behold, we're getting beautifully smooth external surfaces now. So I'm very happy with that. It's looking much nicer. Reprinted the benchy and yeah, much better. That's a, that's a good looking benchy on the outside. A few little ripples and that, but this is only a budget priced printer, so you wouldn't expect um, extreme quality. A little bit of stringing as well, but otherwise looking pretty good. Reprinted the little pilot's head and yes, we don't have any of the cross hatching on the outside. The infill lines are staying internal, which is where they're meant to be. So then I decided to really challenge it and I made up a, a vase with sort of big smooth surface areas here, smooth curves and uh, this will show up any defects at all. And you can see there's a little bit of rippling there. Uh, there's the seam down the back here, the Z seam, uh, and that shows up 
a consistent error all the way through. So what I'm printing now uh, with the vase is a little section in the middle, but with the random uh, layer start. So hopefully all of this rippling will go away. But otherwise, pretty impressive. I'll stop that vase print now. Stop the print, yes. So now we can have a look at how it looks. And that is much better. That is smooth all the way through now. So that random start layer start setting really helps much, much better. I'm going to try the auto levelling system now. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the manual levelling because um, my bed is nice and level, printing nicely, but let's try auto. I'm a bit reluctant because um, manual's working so well, but anyway, we'll give it a go. So I've plugged the sensor in and put it over the nozzle there have to wait till the nozzle's under 50 degrees and um, pull off any dags. Alright, let's try the auto levelling now. I've put the sensor on there, plugged it in. Push the auto again, keep the nozzle under 50 degrees before installing the sensor. Yes, now it's going. So on the screen that's recorded that as 0.3. I think I have to adjust that later on maybe. Uh, minus 0.3 to make that zero. We'll have a look anyway. Looks like it's measuring 16 points on the bed, but only displaying 9 points on the screen. Front is 0.3, middle is So now I'm adjusting, I think, uh, I guess I have to go adjust minus 0.3, we'll try that anyway and then we'll try a print, okay. So now hopefully we'll use that measured auto level set and we'll see what happens. Yeah, and that's printing. That's printing well. That's got the level right now. I've tried it before and it printed too high, but uh, that seems to be the way to do it. There you go. So that's the ET4 from Anet. It's a very nicely designed printer. I like the uh, all-in-one base. I like the ease of assembly. I like the looks. The black and the red go well. The glass plate works well. The, the print quality is perfectly good once you make a few little uh, tweaks like I showed you. I think it prints way better than the price would suggest. I'm not too sure about the top homing. That's uh, it's a little bit strange uh, and it means that the cables have to travel a long way and that you have to watch the filament as, uh, as the z-axis moves up and down again for every start of a print. The auto features are interesting but probably not necessary I don't think. The auto filament loading uh, works fine but it's a lot quicker just to manually load. The auto uh, bed level de detection doesn't automatically level the bed, it just lets you know where it's out of uh, level and lets you digitally adjust uh, the level, I guess. But 
manual leveling works perfectly well so that is probably what I would prefer anyway uh, they're good features the touch screen is very nice works very well uh, but it kind of limits what extra uh, functions you can add uh, through Cura you could pay a bit more and get the silent pro version or the silent version uh, but I'm quite happy with this. I'm in a noisy environment anyway, so noise doesn't worry me at all. And it's not as noisy as the uh, Ender 3. I haven't yet tried connecting it to a computer. I haven't done it with any 3D printers like that yet. And I haven't yet worked out how to uh, make some calibration changes. Once I get more hands-on time with the printer, I'll make more videos and show how to calibrate, uh, how to do more complex prints and things like that. But uh, that's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.